All right, guys. This is a going to be a I'm sorry, not exactly a sharpening video, but I was getting ready to do something. I touched up the wife's knives the other day, and I pointed out that you can see here that the the blade is starting to thin. Well, what happens is, is the blade is thinning, is it's thickening. And the wife said, I, even after I touched it up the other day, she said it's sharp, but it's just it's it's not wanting to cut she was cutting onions and she was it wasn't really wanting to cut the onions the way she wanted to so she switched to my kitchen knives my nicer you know these are cheap farberware I've had for 20 years these are some nicer ones she doesn't like the fact that she can't cut it to heel this one doesn't have a heel guard so what I'm gonna do today what I had planned to do was sorry I'm probably out of frame but I was going to go to the Murray Carter method and I'm going to thin this blade out by taking this part of the blade right here that you can see between the grind and the, that grind area there from the spine. This is, this is a pretty thick kitchen knife to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin it out. But when I get ready to thin it out, I realized that I've got stones. My water stones. that I got one of them I have to replace and a couple of them that I, I haven't maintenance the last time I used them. So I'm going to have to flatten those stones. So I thought I'd do a quick video, of, you know, about water stones. So this is a brand new Kai double-sided water stone. I get them every year when I go, I get two of them because um, I didn't get one last year. I think this one has lasted me two years, but this is what they start out like. And this is what they end up like. Well, as you're using water stones, you're you're wearing away the surface of the stone as you cut. And that forms a slurry, a matrix, in between the stone and the knife. And that's what does the majority of the work. Yes, the stone does cut. That's how you form the slurry, and that's why you see some black marks there. We'll just undo it. You see, it's taken off metal because you see the black on the, on the stone. Now, that slurry acts as a an abrasive matrix as you're taking parts of the stone off it gets in there and it, it makes it cut faster it does and there's people that have and I have one I have a nigiri stone and what a nigiri stone does is it lets you build the slurry first and it maintains your it, it your stones will get clogged sometimes if you have stones that are finer and they're not building a slurry if your stone gets a little dry and it it, it builds that you're not gonna be able to see it but it builds like the that that milky matrix because it's this is coming apart this is coming apart and you're getting a that um, that slurry build up in there but we've reached a point where this stone is no longer usable because as you do it your stones dish out they get a little low spot in here you can't can't get a knife sharp with a stone that's not flat so you have to maintenance your stones and that's what i was getting ready to do so i have all my stones in the in the sink and they're soaking um, because it's going to take a little while to do this. Before I can even start the knife, I have to maintenance these stones. And because this is a new stone, even though it's brand new, I have to do the same thing. Because if you don't ensure that the stone is flat, you will not get a good edge. And for what I'm going to do today, I'm going to do something that you heard me say in my kitchen touch-up video. I usually hold the stone in my hand like this, and I sharpen like this. For what I'm going to do today, the stone needs to be flat, and it needs to be flat on the table because I'm going to be setting this on there all the way to the tip and bringing this down to thin out this blade so my wife can continue to use it. Um, so, and there's spots, the majority of the use of a knife happens in the middle. So the tip and the heel are still thinner. I have to marry this all back up. So it's going to be a lot of work and I'm debating whether I'm going to try and do a video on it because it would be long. It's probably going to take me couple hours. That's why I don't like doing this unless I'm getting paid by someone else. It's kind of counterproductive for me to do it. I do it just because I want my wife to have good cooking influence. But if I'm doing my own knives on my stones, it's, it's almost costing me money because these stones have to be replaced. And I think these are 60, 50 or $60. They're not real expensive. They're pretty nice. But this stone, this Neniwa, 5,000, and it doesn't feel like a 5,000. It feels more like a nine, like a 10,000 grit. It's super smooth. These are expensive. These are, I think these are $110, $120 each. And if you're wearing them out, 
which I'm going to today, then you have to maintenance them. You're taking off more stone and you're limiting the life of the stone. Now, by all means, I'm not going to have to buy a new stone. This stone has lasted two years to get from here to here. And the coarse side is what's going to run down first, as you can see. But, you know, so to maintenance a stone, you need, you know, you don't necessarily have to have one of these. You could use, these are nice. These are great. These make it easy. You could use uh, a piece of, you know, pretty smooth pavement and get the stones good and wet, get the pavement good and wet. As long as it's nice and flat and you don't have a bunch of rocks and stuff underneath that you're going to dig and gouge, you can lay your stone on the ground and just flatten it. But I've got one of these and I'd much rather do it in the kitchen and they're nice because I can set it like this. So this is still in the wrapper. So I am going to have to flatten this one, but what you're going to see me flatten is the older version of this. I'm just going to do one side of it so you can see. So I finally have to break down and break this one out. This one has uh, I said two two years is a pretty good life for stone. I didn't I didn't buy any with that though. You just you buy them at the. It's not like in the states where this stuff is hard to find. I, I get these at the at the Mr. Max or the Hyper Center at, in my in my in laws my mother in law father in law's hometown in Kuruma Japan. I just, it comes with a little stand. This one's not near as nice as the stand on this one. And this one's mounted to the stand. Some of my other ones are too, but you just pick them up at the home store, <laughs> and they're they're really great. This is this is the work. This and this this Kingstone, this really super coarse Kingstone, are the workhorses in my sharpening kit for knives that are damaged. So that that stone's never even been in the water. So it's going to take a while. If you watch, that one's going to have to sit for a while before I even get to it because it's 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 soaking up some fluid. So basically, and I'm going to try and see how I'm going to get this. You have to know what your stone. Sorry, making noise, making a bunch of noise. You got to know where your stone is and isn't flat before you start. So this nanny wash should be good. It's, it, it didn't get used. I'm going to check it and there's a way to check and see. So what you get is, hang on just a second. I'll take you with me. You need a pencil. And we're probably going to have a hard time finding a pencil. In the house. <laughs> you need a pencil. Oh, there it is. Dr. Shrink. That is a doctor's school kit. So get your pencil. Oh, come on. Or pencil lead or whatever you need to use. I'm going to use a piece of pencil lead. I'm going to get a piece of this pencil lead for her. Automatic pencils that she uses. Just be real careful when you use that. So, you don't have to do a lot. You just got to make yourself some marks. And then, this is crude because I wish I had a pencil, but I don't know where they all went. So, you want to find your X's, and you want to go down the center and across. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy, right? You just have to mark the entire stone so that when you set it down and take that... Oh, man, I wish I had a pencil. And you take that. You see how I've got that the, the little grid pattern on there? And you're going to take your 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 maintenance stone, your lapping stone, and you're going to put the stone down. And I'll do it up here so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to set this on there, and then you're going to you're going to take some. You're going to start taking material off the stone, and then you want to flip it. See, as you can see, you can see that the center is where it's all dished out. And you have to get this flat. You got to get it flat. So I'm going to finish it down here. I'll pull this down so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And this is the way my old videos used to look. Usually it helps put a towel or something down. Like a rag or paper towel. And you just want to keep going back and forth. until that stone has no longer got any of that. And you can see, you make a mess, you make a big mess. So, be prepared for that. 
be prepared to have a bunch of paper towels and some other stuff laying around. I'm gonna set this trying to limit the amount of mess that I make. And see, so as you get the and you want to flip your stone back and forth because you, you don't you're you are you you are not capable of putting pressure on it evenly. I don't care how hard you try. You're gonna put more pressure on one side of your stroke than the other. So you want to flip about every five times. That way you you don't get a stone that looks like a ramp. You know what I mean? And the flip side of that too is you, you want to make sure that your lapping stone is nice and flat. If you get a lapping stone, you look at it and it's and it's and it's not flat, and this won't look flat because I'm using an iPhone camera and it gives it that weird, you know, odd angle. If this isn't flat, this isn't gonna be flat. <laughs> so you gotta pay attention to what you're doing. So that's that's basically the maintenance of your stones. I wanted to do a quick stone maintenance, and it works like it for all your stones. Um, and like I said, you can tell when they start getting dished out, and it's easy because what you want to do is you just set it on the counter flat. And if you look and you can see any light or any gaps, and you, you press down it, and it it's just it's not flat. And you can see that's the area of the stone you're going to use most. Um, that's why let me try and get this in there. There you go. You can see that I'm using that. If you look, there's a spot in there that's just gray. Well, that's that dish, that belly that I was talking about, where you've dished it all out. And uh, so, basically, that's the easiest way to do it. And you can do it. There's guys that say, yeah, just do your own piece of concrete, uh, stuff like that. I got this. It was cheap. It came with some other um, sharpening stuff that I had. So, it made it pretty easy. Um, it, it was part of a set. And uh, it, it, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to keep rinsing it because it's got these slots where the, the gunk comes back out. So I'm going to get off here. I'm debating whether I'm going to do the video of flattening this, uh, thinning this out. Uh, it's going to be a long one because it's going to take hours. So I would probably have to get the other camera out and figure a way to pause and edit and do things like that. And I don't, I don't really have to edit. <laughs> I hear uh, I hear people's videos like John Grimsmo talks about spending three hours editing his videos, but he does fancy production level stuff where he's got music and stuff. I'm just I'm just taking pictures of me doing stuff. So, um, you guys have a good weekend. Um, I'm gonna sign off of here. I'll post this here in a little bit. If anybody has any questions about it, um, I can answer those. But like I said, if you're using water stones, you're gonna have to do this pretty much for about every 30 to 40 minutes of sharpening on a stone heavy sharpening you're gonna have to flatten it back out it makes it easier in the long run because you're not having to fight with what i'm about to do right now with a couple of these stones pretty bad um because i was just doing some tip repair so the, for the tip repair just just working on areas where i'm trying to take some material back some of the thicker stones it doesn't have to be fine I'm just trying to take off material that's all i'm trying to do so um yeah I'm, i may try and get a video of that i'm not sure yet it's going to be messy and long so all right, you guys have a good weekend. USS Dubuque, all my boys out there. Yep, should have got one when they came up available. I'll uh, shoot you the thing. If you shoot me an email, I'll shoot the thing on Teespring. Hey, right, later.